further to the release of our Beyond Recruitment Economic and Labour Report in July, and as part of our Beyond Recruitment Leadership Series, we're sitting down with Shamabil Yaqub, one of New Zealand's leading economists, to talk about the new government's policies and the impact that these will have on employers, employees and employment practices as a whole. Shamabil, thank you for joining us. One of the key, key things that we know is a challenge for employers in New Zealand is sourcing of good quality talent. We now have immigration as part of the new government policies. How do you think that's going to impact the talent shortages and an employer's ability to source that quality candidate or talent that we're constantly looking for? Mm. So the new government is going to clamp down on immigration and they have to reduce student numbers and work visas because they're the ones that have grown the most. I think it's going to have quite a big impact on New Zealand businesses. The reality is we have relied on immigration as a pressure valve because we simply don't have enough skilled labour within New Zealand. Unfortunately for New Zealand businesses, it means they're going to find it even harder to find suitable and talented labour, and it means they're going to have to plan to pay a lot more for their skilled labour than they have in the past. And they have to think much harder about dealing with their labour market or their employment strategies without immigration. And that means training more, thinking more long term, and planning to offshore or outsource more than they have in the past. Yeah, it's going to be tricky, isn't it, to bring in that um, calibre of talent that employers are looking for. And I guess, you know, the question is, is this a sensible policy? Well, the thing is, if you think about immigration, four years ago we had negative net migration and the economy still worked. We have very high immigration and we still have problems of not having enough suitable labour. So there is a structural problem of not having enough talented labour. I think there are two issues here. One is around our education system, the other one is around the businesses who are not doing enough in terms of training and retaining staff over a long period of time. So with the changes in immigration, the motivation is much more around infrastructure capacity rather than around the talent side of things. But I think businesses will be collateral damage here and they're not going to get a helping hand and they need to take charge of the situation and work with universities, work with training organizations and boost and bolster their own HR departments so they can re recruit, retain, train and advance. I guess there are sectors that will be hit um, more than other sectors. For example, your construction sector, your technology sector, your retail sectors, your hospitality sectors that are crying for talent and now to impose these immigration policies restricting talent, whether it's at the lower end or the higher end, will have an impact. Without a doubt. So over the last year, most of our economic growth came from population growth. If population growth is going to slow, then we're not going to have as much economic growth. So businesses are going to find it tough, but the reality is that we've worked through immigration cycles in the past. And because it's going to be policy-led, we're going to have, I guess, a lot more um, diverging impacts on different industries. For example, we know that this government wants to still enable lots of construction workers to come in to build lots of homes. So we might see that some parts of the skilled migrant categories are still very open, while others are shut down quite significantly. So we need to wait for the policies and the detail of it to be able to understand fully which industries will be affected the most. But without a doubt, with slower immigration, we are going to find it harder to find labour and businesses have to work much harder and much smarter to be viable. Given your experience, how long do you think it'll take before employers can actually look at the situation and say, OK, we know where we stand? Well, I hope businesses already know where they stand, um, certainly from their own domain. The external influences from government we won't know in full detail until the early part of 2018, once all the new policies have been worked through. But I think businesses should start from the assumption that this is going to happen and it is going to have a big impact on them. And they should think about what can we control, what can we influence, and it has to be through their own HR strategies and their employment strategies and retention strategies, because the reality is that the pendulum has swung away from immigration providing that buffer and safety valve for our, uh, I guess, search for labour and search for talent. Thank you, Shamabil. Appreciate your insights.